Hi everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews. I'm Richard and welcome to changing the brakes on Maya Bath. So it's a bit of a change from the norm. We're not taking any supercars out today, so please stick with us. Um, the, all the brakes needed changing on this and I thought, well, maybe, um, maybe I can provide a little bit of information to the car users out there who want to change the brakes on their cars and of course on the, on the Abarth in particular. It's pretty much the same across the board. Obviously the calipers are different on different cars. But um, So today we're gonna um, run through the actual changing of one side of the front brakes or, and we're gonna change the actual calipers and the brake pads. And this car, the discs are pretty bad, so um, it's, uh, it really needs doing. <laughs> so the first thing to do is to loosen the wheels. So if you're working on both front wheels, if you're gonna put the front of the car on axle stands and work on both front wheels at the same time, or one after the other, then the first thing to do, while the car is still down, lowered on the actual floor, is to loosen off the wheel nuts. Why? Well, because the wheels will spin if the wheels are in the air and you'll have to get somebody to hold the foot, to hold the foot pedal so as to lock the brakes to be able to stop the wheels from spinning. It's a lot easier to loosen the wheel nuts, first of all, when the car is on the floor. Obviously don't loosen them too much, but you just loosen them, you break the seal. So, you can, so it makes it easier for them to undo when the actual car is jacked up. Uh, then the next thing to do is you, you make sure that you jack the car up on the correct points. If you, if you jack the car on the incorrect points, then you're liable to damage the chassis on the car, so that's vitally important. On here, you actually jack the car up on the seam weld. So there's a seam weld, and that's where the car is jacked up with the actual trolley jack here. And then what I've done there is actually put axle stands, which carry, which can uh, deal with something like four tons, of, actually six tons, I think, these axle stands. I've put those under the actual normal jacking points on the car. So jack it up on the seam welds here, pretty close to where the axle stands are gonna go, and then put the car on axle stands to support the car. And those axle stands will never fail with this car, as long as you've got them on the correct points on the car. And I leave the jack, I leave the trolley jack underneath the car just for a little bit of extra security. And then when I've got the wheel off, uh, what I'll do is I'll put the wheel underneath the car as well, just for absolute, to be absolutely sure in case everything fails, which is highly unlikely, the car will then fall on the wheel and it won't damage the car, it, it won't collapse on the floor and it won't damage me more to the point. So safety first. I know it's a cliche, but it's very important. First, I've already, I've already loosened off the bolts and I've already got the car on the axle stands here. So what I'm doing here now is actually undoing the bolts and it's gonna take the wheel off. Here you always have, or you usually have a locking bolt on here. So you have to have a particular locking socket to undo that particular bolt. This fits into the actual concave section on this bolt in the actual, the locking bolt on the wheel. Locates in like so. And then you put a normal socket on there and then you can undo that bolt and the rest of the bolts with just the normal socket because they're just normal bolts the rest of them you only need one locking bolt of course when uh, this wheel was put on it was put on by a tire company and they did use a torque wrench afterwards but god knows what they set the torque wrench to because it's some horrendous amount of torque it was a nightmare to break the seal on the bolts and this is only, as you can see, just had two new tyres put on literally last week. So the, uh, the wheel has only just been tightened up. So God knows why they felt the need to tighten it up to such an extreme amount. But that's tyre companies for you. Right, so the wheel should now just pop off as it does. And then you should be able to just tuck the wheel underneath the car and that provides some extra extra security so if the axle stands fail if the trolley jack fails then the wheel definitely will stop the car from falling down and damaging me the axle stands won't fail they can take six tons and this trolley jack can take a horrendous amount of weight so that's not going to fail either so but just to be absolutely sure now what we have to do next is we've got the caliper system here as you can see these 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 discs are very worn and the brake pads are very worn as well. We'll show you the set that I did on the other side. This is the pads that came off the driver's side, which is classed as the near side. See there was very little material left on those pads and the discs very badly worn. They're making a hell of a screeching sound, hell of a noise. 
they're still functioning but they're not great and if uh, I show you the show you the caliper sorry I'll show you the disc and the pads when they come off this model but first thing to do to make the job easier to gain access to the bolts behind the caliper swivel the steering wheel round so as we expose the bolts a little bit easier to this side obviously you can only do that if you've got the car the whole front of the car and axle stands with the other wheel elevated as well And the next stage is to undo the bolts that locate the caliper to the bracket and then we'll undo the bracket that the caliper fits to and the bracket fits to the wheel carrier but first of all we need to undo the caliper that is on these um, hydraulically adjustable sections to obviously take into account pad wear and um, we'll undo these bolts first of all to remove the caliper and then tie the caliper back and we'll see we've got this connection here for the ABS it's actually might be part for the pad warning actually which is actually broken <laughs> so that's uh, wasn't being used anymore and we have to disconnect this plug here that is actually for the I believe it's for the pad warning and then this will all undo and I have to um, take this off and reconnect for the for the actual new brakes so use a bit of WD-40 first of all to try and loosen and provide some penetrating fluid this is putting some penetrating fluid on the actual bolts that that retain the brake bracket to the wheel carrier because they are very tight they were very tight on the other side so what I'm doing here is I've already removed the caliper from the actual brake assembly this brake assembly is connected to the wheel carrier which is the thing that holds the wheel um, I've disconnected the caliper from the from the brake assembly already these are hydraulic units that allow the the um, caliper to float to allow the caliper to move in and out obviously with respect to the wear of the brake pads um, and uh, what I'm doing now is actually removing the brake assembly from the wheel carrier to allow me to then remove the old disc and replace the disc and then I'll have to put this back on again. So this has been on there a long time since the car was uh, made. So these bolts are really tight. So you have to use penetrating fluid behind the bolts to try and make it as easy as possible the lower bolts tend to be worse I assume that's because they get all the muck thrown up as you can see the brake assembly is a lot looser now because I've loosened off the bolts also it shows because there's quite a bit of effort involved here the last thing you want is the car shaking if it's not stable on axle stands the last thing you want is the is this movement shaking the car and the car falling on you um, so there you go it's the brake assembly bolts it's not quite loose enough yet to be removed by hand It. There we go. Off comes the brake assembly and with the old brake pads. And what we do now is put some cloths down so we don't get brake cleaning fluid onto my gravel drive. Well, we've already got a little bit of uh, penetrating fluid anyway. And what we do then is we get the brake caliper, take the old pads out, they just slide out of the retainers. As you can see there, there's still actually some good material on that. I'm not going to use them again obviously, but there is still, still some brake pad material on there. 
although breaking away on this one so definitely needed replacing so you get your brake cleaner and you spray it predominantly down the sections where the uh, brake pads slide and then you can put that to one side no point I mean if you're dealing with a, uh, a concourse car then you'd worry about getting it immaculate but this car isn't concourse so <laughs> I'm far from worried about that so this is an old trick I learned years ago you want to wedge a, a disc obviously this is an old disc so it's going to be replaced anyway so it doesn't matter if it gets damaged um, wedge a screwdriver in between the slots against the ground if you're trying to undo something in association with the disc and hopefully it will there you go it'll lock the caliper so you can undo the bolts that fix the caliper sorry that fix the the disc to the wheel and you just undo the the disc bolts Keep hold of the bolts, need to use those again. And there we go, the old caliper. The, sorry, the, I keep calling it a caliper. There's the old disc, the old brake disc. Definitely seen better days. Hell of a ridge on there. And that's what would have been causing a lot of the, uh, a lot of the noise. Even though the, there was still material on the pads, the pads would have been fitted in there just like that. As you can see, perfectly fitted in that wear point and that wear groove but it, you're going to get vibration between the lip of this disc and the edge of the pad and a lot of noise but you can see that fits perfectly in there because that's what's worn the disc so these set of discs they were changed once many years ago so there's been two sets of discs on the life of the car since it was new since 2008 so well in need of another set of discs and it's had multiple sets of pads onto these uh, sets of discs but these because they're they're quite um, they're quite, uh, fri they've got a, they're quite a strong friction, uh, quite a high friction uh, material on these Brembo pads. So they do actually constitute quite a bit of wear on the discs because that's how you create friction, of course. Friction induces wear, unfortunately. That's the old disc. So what we do now is we spray all this assembly with cleaner fluid. This is brake cleaner fluid, so it will evaporate. It's a special type of product specifically for cleaning brake air. As you can see, it's evaporating already, but the power of the actual, of the spray itself, pushes the cleaner fluid into, into the areas and cleans it and dries it out. So it evaporates, it's, um, it's obviously got a, a, an, an a evaporative um, carrier fluid in it that carries the actual cleaning product. Um, and there we have the, um, the old disc, um, sorry, the old wheel carrier. Um, the wheel carrier is going to stay the same but this is the wheel carrier this carries the wheel therefore it's called a wheel carrier in america they call them uprights for some reason i presumably because they are upright but uh, the proper name for them is his wheel carrier um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to we've already wound the caliper the the piston back in the caliper it's single piston calipers on these we've already wound the caliper back using the caliper winding back tool um, and uh, you literally, on the other side I could do it manually, it wasn't so bad, but on this side it was quite tight, so literally you have to um, screw the caliper back in with a pressure device, um, almost like you're using a hydraulic press, but you're using a screw press to do it, um, which is what these tools, these tools do. Um, and then we'll be ready to put the, the new pads and the new disc on. I think we can quite safely say that disc is boned. So this is the new disc. And these have, instead of having drill holes, they have drill to help cook with cooling and slots to help with cooling. Drill, drill holes have been proven to only really be useful for racing on the track. And the drill holes actually tend to cause fracturing of the discs so it's better actually it's been proven to actually have drill holes and slots to actually aid cooling and aid 
the um, removal of swarf, in effect brake pad dust from the um, from the braking area. So first thing we do, again, make sure this area is clean. So we give it a bit of a. I haven't got a proper wire brush, unfortunately. Something I meant to get, but I just seem to forgot forget for some reason. So I'm using a make do wire brush. Just cleaning off all the excess grime around the actual wheel carrier where the disc is going to locate. So we get a, a nice clean mating surface between the disc and the wheel carrier. And what you do is you put a little bit of copper grease on this surface again to aid to prevent squealing and to help it to mate obviously you make sure you don't get this on the actual disc surface <laughs> put the disc onto the surface and you get your bolts locate the discs to the holes like so and So we're just nipping up the bolts now on the caliper, sorry, on the, on the disc that retains the, retains the disc to the wheel carrier. So these are the bolts that retain the wheel, the, these are the bolts that retain the disc to the wheel carrier. Now they don't actually retain it to the wheel carrier, they just hold it there um, and prevent it from moving. The wheel actually holds the disc onto the wheel carrier because obviously you've got your big bolts that go through when you've got the wheel on and these go through the actual disc as well um, so it's the actual wheel bolts that really truly hold the disc onto the wheel carrier not these locating bolts these just locate it on um, you don't really need them actually um, in the olden days you used to have little phillips screws that used to locate them on and there's no way they were going to take the, the the, um, the, the force that was involved when you're braking. It's obviously the wheel bolts that take the force. These are high tensile bolts. So we've got that located. Now what we need to do is start rebuilding the actual, the actual wheel. So what we do first of all is we bolt the wheel carrier back on. Sorry, we bolt the, the brake assembly, which is this unit, and back on to the actual wheel carrier. So firstly, what I'm going to do is put a bit of penetrating fluid into these threads and put a little bit of copperese grease onto these bolts. Okay, so what I'm doing here now is putting, I've wound the piston back into the caliper. I've put the new pads into the, into the brake housing. I've bolted the brake housing to the wheel caliper. I've torqued it up with the torque wrench to the correct rating value, Newton meters of torque. I've put some copperies on the actual back of the new shims on the back of the brake, new brake pads so that there's no squealing when the actual, when these materials, when this backing plate of the caliper squeezes and pushes onto the actual back of the pads and when this piston of the caliper pushes on this side of the pad. Then I've rooted the brake pad wear warning cable through and just locating the actual caliper back together now and then we use the bolts that we had for the brake caliper with a little bit of copperese on the bolts and the threads to help them on their way make sure that these hydraulic gallow sections they have to be horizontal they're flaps on them that locate into the caliper so we've tightened the brake caliper up to the to the brake assembly 
Um, this is the bellow section so that the caliper can float, what they call float, so it can move in and out as the piston clamps on the actual pad on this side because there's only one piston. And then it will then push against that pad which will pull this caliper, part of the caliper, this way across on these hydraulic um, pistons which is in, in, underneath these gallows which protects the pistons from being pitted through dirt and will clamp the actual pads onto the actual rotating disc. This is the actual um, brake pad warning. So this now gets rooted through and under into this locator here. It runs freely. And then you locate this device, this plug, back with the actual device here. You can see where it clips into the back here. Locates in like that. And then this locates onto back of this unit here. Just pull this down. Like so. Have it. Uh, just to finish off the wheel, we use the last bit of disc cleaner on the outside of the disc. What this does is it removes any remaining grease from the disc itself. Just about run out of this. And then we we put some on there anyway, but we'll just add a little bit more copperies onto the actual mating surface where the wheel's going to mate. It just prevents the wheel from locking and, and solidifying onto the actual mating surface. And then what we're going to do, which you're not going to see on camera because my son's going to have to help me, is he's now going to push the brake pedal and that will clamp the, clamp the caliper, the clamp the caliper onto the disc, lock the disc so as I can just nip up the retaining bolts not that they really matter to be nipped up but i don't want them coming loose and falling out so now it just leaves me to put the wheel back on you'll feel the wheel locate onto the lip as it has there and then you should be near as damn it right which i am on the bolts, just start the bolts. In this instance, we always tighten bolts opposing. It's a proper way to, to uh, tighten bolts or knit bolts up in this instance. You can see here the fluid level has risen all the way back up again because the calipers are now fully compressed because we've got new pads in there. So there's the pallets, the calipers, the piston, sorry, are fully compressed. So the pistons have been pushed back into their calipers now to uh, enable for the wear and to enable new pads to be fitted. Now we lock up the wheels to the correct newton meter of force, which is just going to check wheel bolts 110 newton meters. So we set the torque wrench, set the torque wrench to 110. So that marker there, so that's the white line. Put it out first so we can adjust it. 110, and then you zero out the marker here, which is the fine adjustment. That is bang on 110 newton meters of torque. Push in the lock. Then, I'm going to use a slight extension on this. And we wait for the click. Yeah, you can hear the click when they're torqued up. And then what we do is we just go around them again, just to make absolutely sure. And 
and that's it. We do the other wheel. And we go around again. That's it. Job's done. Front wheel, front brakes, front calipers, and brake pads changed. So what we've got to do now is do the rear ones, but we won't be doing that today. So what we've done today is we've changed the front brake discs and the front brake pads. We've cleaned up all the mating surfaces. We put copper ease, grease, wherever we needed to for the mating surfaces. Obviously we make sure we didn't get that on the pads or on the actual um, discs themselves. We use special brake cleaning fluid to clean off the discs to get any remains of any grease off the discs, just you know, because your hands are greasy when you're actually putting the, the parts back together again. And we made sure that we talked all the bolts back together while working in a safe environment on axle stands that could take easily the weight of this car with supported jack and with the wheels pushed underneath the car to just add a little bit of additional security. So there we have it. Front brake discs and brake pads changed in the above. Great stuff. So thanks a lot for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you click the like button so, you, so that you give it the thumbs up. So we've got great new content to come. Um, obviously 458 content. We've got some car shows that's coming up. Um, we're at Sun or Privé, for example, this year on the Saturday with the Ferrari Owners Club. And we've got various other events that we're going to as well. Um, and we'll be doing the rear brakes, the rear discs on this above as well in the near future. Um, we'll only do one, don't worry. We won't put you through the pain of all of them. And uh, yeah, so it takes me back to the days when I used to do all my own work on my cars many years ago when I was a young lad. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And we'll see you in the next video.